Hi, I'm Bill, and if this is the first time dropping into the channel, welcome. Well, it's Sunday morning, August uh, 7th, 2022. I'm up here at Blue Canyon Airport, uh, outside Nyack, California. It's a dark site that's managed by the Sacramento Valley Astronomical Society. Uh, the project I'm working on is I'm doing a two-panel mosaic using my ASI 294mm monochrome uh, camera of the North America Nebula NGC 7000 and the Pelican Nebula IC 1396. Uh, I've already done the Pelican Nebula before, but I just felt that uh, when I did the North America Nebula, I should bring the Pelican Nebula uh, into the uh, framing and so that's why I've decided to do a two-panel mosaic. I got about five hours of data last night. It was a good night. Uh, moon was up until about uh, 1.04 this morning. Forecast is for some cl clouds to roll in tonight. We'll kind of see how that uh, goes but you know that's uh, that's the way it works and uh, let's step inside. I want to share with you an update on my Celestron Edge HD 8 inch uh, setup. Uh, I've made a change and I thought that I would uh, share that with you. So let's step inside. Okay, so as I uh, indicated, uh, here's the update. Since my ZWO OAG was on back order and I continued to get suggestions from uh, viewers that maybe the Celestron OAG might be a better um, option for me. Uh, I made the decision and I uh, purchased the uh, Celestron OAG Friday morning from OPT. You know, there was a part of me that wanted to understand the challenges of trying to use the ZWO OAG with my Edge HD 8 uh, configuration. But then I started to think I'm going to have enough challenges already trying to bring that online. So if I can spend a couple of hundred dollars more and uh, remove or make it a little bit easier to bring the OAG into operation and, and have a higher probability of being able to find um, guide stars, uh, why not just do it, uh, bite the bullet, and uh, as you probably know, the ZWO OAG has an 8.8 millimeter by 8.8 millimeter prism. The Celestron has a 12 millimeter by 12 millimeter uh, prism, as I understand it. And so it should enable uh, my success uh, trying to find guide stars. And so we'll see. So. I just wanted to share that with you. I want to thank my viewer, viewers that uh, gave me the feedback. I really, this is what I love about my audience. I get some very good uh, feedback and guidance and I appreciate it. It's uh, really helping me. And um, so yeah, I spent another $200 and uh, swapped out the, uh, the OAGs. And I want to thank OPT again. They were very easy to work with and canceling the order. Uh, for the original ZWO OAG, they give me store credit, which then I apply to the purchase of uh, the Celestron, and it works out beautifully, pretty seamless. But um, I should have this in a, in a day or two, but the things that are still on back order are my uh, ASI 174 um, MM uh, Mini uh, guide camera and uh, the reducer. Uh, and a T adapter. So um, we'll just have to see when those uh, items become available. So I figure I'm still a couple months away. All right, I just want to share that. And then um, I got the opportunity last night. There's a gentleman, Richard, next to me. His uh, webpage is brightstarobservatory.com. He's a very experienced imager. He has several uh, telescopes. Last night he was using his uh, 925 um, um, reflector, his um, uh, Celestron 925, and he was managing everything using an ASI Air Pro, which I understand is no longer available, but it's uh, the ASI 
Plus, ASI Air Plus is now uh, the replacement. So I got an extended opportunity at around oh, 4 o'clock this morning to see him uh, use the uh, interface of the ASI Air and um, to do several operations including recalibrating his guiding and manually moving his mount at times. Uh, it was a, a great experience to see that. I'm not necessarily going to jump in right away and get an ASI Air Plus but it's becoming more and more a possibility that could be in my future. Now that I have two mounts, the HQ5 and the EQ6R Pro, and I have well two telescopes, I'm going to need um, and one computer right now, my B-Link U59 uh, mini computer. Uh, I am going to need, it may give me an opportunity to get the ASI Air uh, Plus and use it in as part of the configuration of one of the scopes so we'll see i just wanted to share that with the uh, fans of the asi air product out there and uh, those that have been encouraging me to move in that direction uh, i'm not there yet but the more i get an opportunity to see it in its use and talk to the owners face to face um, the more it's piquing my interest as a possible uh, part of my future imaging kit you know we'll see i am still in love with nina i love the filter offsets um, there's many things i like about nina now that i'm digging into the advanced sequencer uh, a lot of great opportunities there to set up your night of imaging uh, using the advanced sequencer so um, we'll just have to see but this is the great thing for me as i'm here at the sacramento valley astronomical society dark site is the opportunity to meet other imagers that have different types of kit and get an understanding for them why they went in that direction what they feel the pros and cons are and then i had a great discussion last night about opportunities to improve my knowledge in the pix insight area um, uh, one uh, imager uh, spent a couple of hours well, with the masters of Pix Insight, Ron Beecher, I think his name is, and he said it was just a fantastic experience for a couple of hours. Uh, just really got him up his Pix Insight learning curve. So, again, these are the things I like about these clubs uh, and where people are out imaging and you get to meet them. And there was one person last night that shared me some images. He's more planetary and, and, and moon. And he uh, captures the shadow of the International Space Station against the illuminated moon. And he says he's got about four or five seconds to capture that uh, shadow. Uh, and uh, he has to do all these calculations to figure out what cornfield he needs to be in to get the right angle and all that. So the other thing I'm finding out by participating in the clubs, uh, there's various genre in a sense that people uh pursue in what you might call uh astrophotography all right um again it's uh, uh we're going to see tonight i plan to image but some clouds may roll in around one o'clock in the morning we'll see what happens there i should have my image uh available in a couple of weeks and um other than that if you like this kind of content please give it a thumbs up as always uh, like share and subscribe and wherever you may be in the world, um, clear skies. And keep in mind that I do have a Facebook group called Astro Vagabond and Friends. If you'd like to join, um, just ask to join. Hit the join button and I'll get notification and I'll let you in. And um, I we just have a small number of uh, uh, people participating right now, but it's a good chance to show your work and uh, also ask some questions and uh, get some answers and those type of things. Okay, thanks again for dropping into the channel. Other than that, see you next time.